A bat! Get it, get it out! Ah, son of a Ah, it bit me! Ah, it stings. Gee, I sure hope I don't turn into a vampire. Welcome once again to another Halloween special. Prepare to be horrified when you witness this trilogy of terror. Released in 1991, 1994, and 1998. Written by Doug Mensch with art by Kelly Jones. With inks by Malcolm Jones III and John Beatty. This is Batman Vampire Chapter 1. Red Rain. In the dark shadows of Gotham City, a shadowy man hires a prostitute. She leads him to a back alley couch, and when the woman asks for her payment, the man says, Silence. I don't give. I take. The man flashes his fangs in the moonlight before violently tearing into the woman's neck. Then he leaves her corpse lying on the sofa and walks off into the night. Cut to Wayne Manor, dusk of the following day. It starts as a mist, sinuous, hypnotic, and ends as a woman. I can't move, spellbound. Her eyes fill me, pitting me. Suddenly she's close. So am I, fluttering softly above, a presence of scent and movement. Warm breath, murmured words, something about the night, eternal darkness, and a gift. Ugh! Gone, nothing but a dream, brought on by that poor girl, her poor neck. Then we're met with a little, like, dual storyline where Bruce wakes up and gets prepared as Batman while a homeless man is shooed away by some cop wearing a gas mask. Also, we're introduced to the best Batmobile in existence. Second to the 1963 Batmobile, that is. The cop says it's not safe for the vagrant to stay there, but he's like, I'll be fine, I got nothing nobody want. But when the officer is far enough away and, like, rounds a corner, the man hears, Nothing. Oh, man. Uh, who said that? And a creature of the night emerges from the shadows. Batman hears the screams of agony and fear from the nearby rooftops, and he races across them, but arrives too late. Again, making this the third attack he's been unable to stop. Cut to somewhere gothic. James Gordon tells the mayor that there have been 19 throat slashings so far, and the mayor's like, There's a lot more than that, Gordon, and still counting. And the mayor tells him that they can't let a word about this get out, especially since he's Gotham's first black mayor, and if people start believing he couldn't protect his own city. Gordon says that maybe they should actually do something then, <laughs> instead of just like sweeping it under the rug. But then the mayor orders Gordon to find and stop off this homicidal maniac while he makes sure the city maintains order and calm. Gordon says he'll do everything he can and leaves the office. The dream again. Beauty blossoming from mist. She certainly seems real, but now even more mysterious and ethereal. The soul of night itself. And again I can't move, but this time I don't want to. She rises, recedes, floating away, her lips so sweet and red. Later that night, Batman sits perched on a gargoyle before traversing above the city. And can I just say how much I absolutely love the art and costume style and just general aesthetic of this book, especially his like long ears. I just love Kelly Jones's art style. It's amazing. Meanwhile, a homeless woman pushes a shopping cart down a desolate street. Suddenly she hears a hissing and a monstrous woman leaps out at her from the shadows before slashing her face and feeding on her neck. Batman sloops down and clocks the she-beast in the face. A little late, Batman, but at least you made it here this time. She's clearly mad, almost demonic in her mask of blood. Blood spurted from the slashed throat, but this time I've caught her. This time I'm not minutes or moments too late. This time she's... what? So fast. 
Then Batman gets his ass kicked and the woman runs away. But Batman gives chase, but he's, he's led into a dead end with no sign of the attacker. He then returns to the victim, but discovers she's dead. Then he realizes that he actually interrupted the killer after the blood had been let, but before the throat could be slashed. Gee, I sure hope that doesn't cause any problems. I'm sure it won't. It's just some homicidal maniac. Cut to the Batcave. Alfred gives Bruce a rundown of his upcoming Bruce Wayne activities, but Batman tells him to cancel them all. Alfred asks why, and Bruce says that he's busy and very tired. As he makes his way upstairs, he thinks, How can I tell him that the real reason is daylight and the unbearable prospect of going out in it? How can I tell him Bruce Wayne is dead? And it's only the night now. Only the dark side that holds any meaning. Later, Bruce is again visited by his delightful dream doxy, and she says, He awakens from his wet dream and goes to get into his automobile, but when he grabs the handle, he rips off the door. Then he lifts the car up with no effort. Bruce is later met at his home by Dr. Church. Ha. <laughs> and has his blood drawn. Bruce tells him to just look for anything unusual in it and uh, contact him if he does. And then he asks him to look at his back, specifically his shoulder blades. And Church discovers contusions, like, in two separate places, and then leaves. Cut to the sewers of Gotham City. We brought you the best master, just like you said. Runaways from the bus terminal. Are any of them on drugs? No, master. We checked. Good. Then bring them closer. Cut to some weird gothic apothecary slash librarian. Batman meets this woman named Ariane and asks her about vampire lore. So she shows him a vampire lore book, and he's like, Do you believe in vampires? How might they come to be? How are they created? Supposedly through an evil alchemy of the blood, producing immortality, exaggerated strength, sensitivity to sunlight, an insatiable appetite for blood, and alteration of the saliva into a transformative venom, which theoretically is how the victims perpetrate the phenomenon. What else? Uh, they can transform into bats, mist, wolves, can only be harmed by silver, the cross, sunlight, decapitation, and a stake through the heart. Must a vampire be... evil? Assuming they actually exist? I don't know. The rain is turning redder, chemicals in the air, alchemy by accident. They say it could do some serious damage to your eyes. Does that make the rain evil? Are predators evil? Humans have the choice of not hunting. Oh yeah, vegetarian vampires. Why are you asking me so much about this, anyway? Uh, cr all criminals are vampires to me. Okay, I gotta go. So later, after the red rain has finally stopped falling, Batman makes his way to Potter's Field, a shitty little graveyard out in the woods. He makes his way around the grounds and finds empty graves. Then he heads back to the courtyard where he lost that woman and discovers a sewer grate. So he rips it out of the ground effortlessly as lightning strikes and red rain begins to shower him. What is happening to me and to Gotham below? The answers wait below. In hell. He slowly makes his way through the red waters of the sewer system as the stench of rotting fills the air. Then he finds a pile of corpses stacked one atop the other, when suddenly it trembles. Two grotesque arms shoot out from inside the hill of deformed bodies, and squirming out of it is a ghoulish creature, followed by two more. They attack Batman, but he blocks them and flees further into the sewer where he finds three fresher vampires consuming a woman. Trapped between six demons, Batman puts up his dukes and fights the subterranean terrors. But there are just too many of them. They're too strong. Batman gets over and as a vampire is about to eat him, a stake is shot through its rotten heart, and four people show up, opening fire on the vampires with automatic stake rifles. As Batman catches his breath, a woman says, Vampires are real, 
but not all of them are evil. This woman introduces herself as Tanya. She's a good vampire, like Blade. She begins to explain what they're doing when massive gusts of wind blow throughout the storm sewer, and a giant demonic bat creature flies down saying, Again we meet, dear Tanya, and again you hunt my children. On your knees, all of you. So the vampire vampire hunters are enthralled to get to their knees and shoot themselves with their stake rifles. Then Batman leaps up and kicks the mysterious man into the darkness and into a red waterfall, breaking the spell he had on Tanya and her buddies. Batman and Vampire Man are pulled through the rushing current of the sewers and Bruce is slashed across the chest by piercing claws. Just the sight of it. Just the scent of it. It drives you crazy, doesn't it? <sighs> then Batman makes a cross out of his own blood and says, You want it? Come and get it. If you can. The two stand there staring at each other for hours as Batman slowly bleeds out, until finally, from the sewer grate above, the sun's light begins to shine through. And the vampire vows that the next time they meet, Batman's blood will be his. Then he retreats into the darkness. So Batman crawls his way out of the sewer and walks through the streets in broad daylight. Cut to Wayne Manor. Alfred patches up Bruce as he explains that vampires are in fact real. And Alfred asks about his back, but Bruce tells him to just finish the bandages and then let him rest in peace. He's had a very long day. In the kitchen of Wayne Manor, Alfred pours a glass of tap water, but discovers that last night's rain was just too much for the filtration system. Also, it's apparently eating away at their slate roof, and killing the trees, and messing up the oceanic ecosystem. So he just pours himself a glass of mineral water and says, One way or another, it's certainly changing what we drink. In Bruce's bedroom, he's visited by Tanya, who explains that she gave him the gift to fight the Lord of the Undead, Dracula. She says it was never possible for him to pray undetected, but now that he's in a large modern city where crimes and death just happen, he's found easy victims. He's a wolf in the sheep pen, or whatever the saying is. No one will notice until it's too late, and his vampiric legion has been assembled. Flashback time! On an autumn night in a time and place far from Gotham, Tanya is bitten by Dracula. And after 70 years of living a lustful life for blood, she witnesses Dracula about to feast on a child. So she fled into the woods and fed on animals until she met good vampires. Then she tells him that since most of the good pyres were created by Dracula, they can't resist his powers, but Batman can. Morning comes, and Tanya is gone. Bruce wakes and yells, Alfred, I need you to deliver a message to Gordon. And he looks horrifying. Cut to James Gordon walking down the street towards the dockyard. So he makes his way to the dock warehouses and is called over by Batman. Batman beckons him inside and Gordon asks if he's alright when he's interrupted by Tanya, who informs him that Gotham is infested with vampires. Batman tells them that these are friendly vampires and Gordon's like, that's... that's absurd! Batman asks if he saw the dead body with the punctures in her neck, and Gordon's like, Oh. Oh, well. The notion of actual vampires is... hard to swallow. If a threat is not recognized, it goes unchecked. Their preferred method of feeding is to drag their victims down into their nests, in the sewers. Some get desperate and come above ground to feed. Gordon still doesn't buy it, so Tanya tells him to shoot her, and then lunges to attack him. So Gordon pops her and she's fine. Even her suit, somehow. So Gordon says he believes, and he doesn't care what the mayor says. Then he asks if Batman can stop it, but Batman says, I don't know. I need more rest. But Tanya and I have formed a plan to take out the rest of them. Then Gordon leaves the warehouse and tells them that he'll hold a press conference in the morning. And from the skies above... A large creature is in flight. And back in the warehouse, Batman collapses. Bruce then awakens in his bedroom with Tanya giving him a blood transfusion. Tanya stands up and says that Dracula has taken his friend. What? What do you mean? My, my friend? Alfred! Alfred! He smashes through his bedroom door and races downstairs to find 
Alfred on the telephone. Then three vampires smash through the window. Bruce orders Alfred to get back, and then he kicks some blood-sucking ass, and Bruce breaks off table legs and drives them through the vampiric hearts. Then the television changes to a special news bulletin. Police Commissioner James Gordon is missing. And then Bruce realizes what Tanya meant, and he tells Alfred that it's time for the plan, and to meet him where they agreed when this is all over. Alfred says, Yes, sir. And God save Commissioner Gordon. Not God, Alfred. Me. Cut to the vast sewer system of Gotham. Gordon calls Dracula a madman, and Dracula's like, Do you know what happens to birds that feed on fish from a polluted stream? Sometimes they die. Sometimes they mutate. Sometimes, Commissioner Gordon, they go mad. That which affects the prey reaches the predator. The blood of all humans in this modern world is slowly driving me mad. I no longer care, Gordon, and that makes me dangerous. More dangerous than I have ever been. Gotham has changed me, Commissioner. I have become a total monster. Dracula turns into his massive, monstrous form and carries Gordon out of the sewers and into the sky while he, like, raves about, about vengeance. Meanwhile, in the sewers, three vampires stand around talking about their master killing a cop or whatever when they're struck by batarangs. Boo. Batman is chased by vampires through the sewers until he rounds a corner and they're all shot by the to-death-in-peace glampires. Unfortunately, more vampires have reacquired his scent and chase him towards a dead end. When? He blows up the wall and enters the Batcave. Tanya and the others corral the vampires into the cave as Batman races up into the manor. Now the sacrifice Tanya and the others have asked me to administer must not be in vain. The timing must be right. It's got to be near dawn. I time the tunnel run three times when planting the explosives. Let it work. Let there be light piercing the netherworld below. And Bruce sets off explosives within the cave. Sunlight floods through the rubble of the former bat cave as all the vampires are burned. In the shadows, Tanya stands facing the last remaining vampire. He taunts her about being unable to cross the light, but she shouts, I can and I will. Tanya lunges through the air, through the sunlight, and grabs the vampire before dragging it out into the sun's glory, killing them both. Back in the manor, Bruce grabs a detonator and a trench coat before climbing into this pod thing and taking one last look at his home. With the pod safely sealed, Bruce pulls the trigger of the detonator and then Wayne Manor is no more. The explosion causes all the rubble of the home to crash down into the cave, becoming a tomb. The next morning, Wayne Manor lies in ruin, and that night, Bruce emerges from his pod wearing the trench coat, and he takes one last look at the ruins of his former homes, when a gust of wind almost knocks him over, and giant talons rip past his head as Dracula flies into the night. Somewhere in Gotham, Bruce Wayne walks down the street as red chemical rain drenches him. And finally, he arrives at a safe house and finds Alfred. Bruce tells him only Dracula is left. Good job at preparing the place, Alfred. We're equipped with everything we need. Except a cave and a garage. We haven't a place for the car, sir. From now on, Alfred, I won't be needing... A car. And Bruce reveals two giant bat wings protruding from his back. Then Batman flies into the night sky and Alfred's like, I apologize, sir, but you will not face him alone. Large leathery wings carry the masked manhunter through the dark red sky. And somewhere in this giant fucking castle, Dracula sits with Gordon while he watches the rain and like waits for Batman. Your blood will be mine, but my kiss will not be yours. <laughs> I avoided the vein, you see. And yours will be a slow death of bleeding. Then, darkness forever. No. There's more than darkness. True death is nothing but darkness. 
a void of cold blackness until the awakening. And for you, there will be no awakening. As Dracula sips from the Commissioner's dark nectar, the Batman discovers his own bats are now under the Dark Lord's control. And meanwhile, Alfred races through the streets like a fucking madman, as bats just, like, cause havoc throughout the city for whatever reason. It's like Hitchcock's birds, but with Dracula's bats. Which sounds pretty sick, I'd watch that movie. Lightning strikes the skies behind the caped crusader as he flies nearer and nearer to the tower. When will he come, Commissioner? When will your dark avenging angel... <laughs> Batman launches a silver batarang at Dracula and clocks his undead ass, but Dracula slashes him off. Batman lunges away and then frees Gordon. Because of me, Tanya lived for centuries. After finding you, she died within weeks. You should have fled when you had the chance. She died building me a bridge to you. To what end? Your city is mine. It's pathetic. Humans are mine. Even your bats are mine. Leaving me with nothing but silver. And Batman launches a silver batarang right into Dracula's cheek. Dracula attempts to bring down Batman but is turned into a pincushion until he leaps from a window and turns into his bat form. And Batman gives chase through the blood rain as Alfred follows his nocturnal master outside of the city. Lightning strikes as Batman dive bombs Dracula and the undead titans battle throughout the night sky. His strength's impossible. He's beating me away. As if I were no more than... And Dracula sinks his teeth into Batman. The two battle midair until a bolt of lightning strikes a nearby telephone pole, revealing a perfectly good stake. Batman directs Dracula towards it and then begins falling towards the ground. He frees himself from Dracula's grip at the last second, and Dracula is impaled by the giant stake. The monster shrieks in pain and Batman watches on. Slowly, Dracula's body ignites in purple flame, and he is turned into nothing more than dust under the red rain. He's gone now. The Lord of Disparity is dead. He took so much blood, and I'm bleeding still. I... I think... I think... I'm dying. Batman collapses to the ground and is later found by Alfred. Mr. Pennyworth lunges out of the car and races to his master, but it's too late. He screams at the top of his lungs to the bloody heavens. Seven days later, the mayor resigns and Bruce Wayne has been laid to the earth. And Alfred sets up the remainder of Bruce's fortune, I guess, to go to, like, various new foundations and charities and whatnot. Alfred Pennyworth walks through the empty streets of Gotham until he arrives back at the safe house. Then he enters the dark basement and says, I, I still can't get over it, sir. When I found you, I could have sworn you were actually... I am dead. Alfred. Sir? But don't worry. Bruce Wayne may be dead, but Batman will go on forever. Vampires are real, but not all of them evil. Chapter 2 Bloodstorm the hour is dark. The night cloaks evil in its every shadow. Except one. Me. The Batman flies down into a dark alley as two assailants open fire on him. Bullets. Nice try. Batman then beats these guys' asses in and tosses one of them into like some nearby trash, which reveals the dead body of a woman. And she has multiple puncture wounds over her white skin. Batman picks up a conveniently placed stake-shaped piece of wood and drives it through her heart, ensuring their numbers don't grow. As he realizes, hey, I guess I missed some. Seven nights later, a man in a large trench coat and a top hat walks through the streets. He makes his way down to a sewer opening and walks down it. And this man is revealed to be... 
the Joker. He turns a corner and finds several vampires just sort of like lurching in the dark. Ha <laughs> ha, there you are, half-rotted, foul-smelling, sunken-eyed, befanged and all. A vampire gets up in his shit and hisses, so Joker squirts him with some holy water from his flower lapel. <laughs> and an even holier stick stick. <laughs> there are ways to rid you of that cross, and yet you laugh? <laughs> of course, I couldn't live without laughter. Even in the face of our kind of death? Especially! You're all too short-sighted. You're nothing more than vaguely intelligent fleas. <laughs> Anthropomorphic leeches. Mosquitoes walking erect. Uh, stupid bloodsuckers with a curls. You've lost a leader. And now you can't even think. Sure, you could slip my blood. Like stupid, mindless animals. Or you could forego my blood. Trust me, you, you don't want it. And embrace me for what I am. Your new leader. <laughs> Besides, I'm the only one in Gotham with better teeth than you. <laughs> Later that night, Alfred stands in the parlor holding a glass of I can't believe it's not blood as smoke crawls under the window. Batman forms from the smoke and Alfred gives him his sustenance and he like just chugs it down as he exposits in his monologue. Just in case you haven't read the first part of this book. Then Batman prepares to depart when Alfred gives him a bat steak. Meanwhile in the sewers, King Joker overlooks his subjects and gives them the codes for living. From now on, we go in and out. Swift, bloody, no prisoners taken, but all victims converted. Oh, and you, Mr. Creech, <laughs> for your boldness with the brick, you're my lieutenant, my right fang man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come now, it's time we begin infusing our ranks with far richer blood. <laughs> Batman overlooks the city, but he I guess he like fell asleep and he has a nightmare about Tanya and then he looks to the sky and sees the bat signal. When he arrives, Gordon says there's a serial killer at large and his M.O. is stakes through the heart, followed by decapitation. And Gordon's like, You wouldn't happen to know anybody like that, would you? Batman tells him Tanya and he missed some vampires, and until they're all dead, the serial killer will continue. Then he says that he might require daylight help. Uh, that being taking out entire nests while they're sleeping. Gordon says that he'll put a team together, and Batman's like, I hope it doesn't come to that, Gordon. But if it does, thanks. And then Batman flies into the sky. Cut to some mafia house. The Don or whatever tells Creech that this Joker guy should have sent the more respectable man if he wants in on the rackets. And they think he's wired, so they demand he take his shirt off. Well, he does. And pulls out his heart. And then he bites and rips off the face of the mafia boss as other vampires siege the house. Cut to... Arcadia Cemetery. Batman stands before a mausoleum with his bat stakes. One of Arcadia's newest residents is mob boss Donato Cordona, slain in his home a week ago along with three bodyguards, one brother, two cousins. No crosses near the mausoleum, even though Cardona was Catholic. Inside the mausoleum, these bloodsuckers wake up, and the guy who got his face ripped off tells them the coast is clear when he's stamped by a bat stake. Then Batman kills all the vampiros until he gets to the boss. Cardona says that the old Batman never killed, and now he's a one-man holocaust. Then he calls him a hypocrite for still taking blood. I do not drink blood. But you want to. Rich, sharp blood. Sweet tang on your tongue. Gushing in your mouth. Flooding your throat. Quenching. You awful thirst. No, I don't drink blood. But you will. You'll get your lips wet sooner or later. What is this accent? You'll give in to the red. No. My throat is going to be horrified tomorrow. Then Batman plunges a stake through Cardona's heart and hacks off his head. And he leaves the cemetery and thinks, No matter how fast I run, 
I can't slip the scarlet lure. Death mocks me. Life tempts me. Thirst haunts me. The three curse me. Dracula was easy compared to this struggle. Ah, holy shit. Jesus, that's terrifying. Later that night, a woman named Miss Kyle leaves from somewhere and walks down the dark streets as a man stalks her. Miss Kyle runs away, but is grabbed from the shadows by the same man. She wonders aloud how he got ahead of her and then hears, My name's Creech, Miss Kyle. I already forgot what Creech sounds like. The name is Creech, Miss Kyle. And I want your blood! Miss Kyle runs away again, but Creech keeps appearing in front of her from the shadows. Still playing hard to get? Maybe I should transform into a bat. No? How about a wolf? Miss Kyle is chased across a bridge as a giant wolf lands atop her and starts ripping her clothing off before sinking its fangs into her body. She kicks it in the wolf dick and jumps off the bridge into the river. Because, fun fact, vampires hate running water. They can't cross it. God damn, what the fuck even is this? Look at her body. <laughs> anyway, Miss Kyle makes her way home and falls asleep and then cats lick her wounds. Like that one movie. Cut to another mafia house. A fish is thrown over the compound wall. Then it explodes. And then vampires just flood over the wall, followed by Joker and Creech. Joker tells Creech to be careful with the blood on the carpets because this place is their new home. Then they run into the massive mob boss, so Joker shoots him in the head, and then Creech goes to bite the boss's squeeze. Sometime later, atop a rooftop, Gordon tells Batman about three missing girls. Dancers in a club owned by Manny the Shark, who was now dead. First Cardona, now the shark. The plague's still spreading and into newer areas. I'll check it out, but prepare yourself. A week later, the Joker and his undead army have successfully taken out every other gang in Gotham, and the police still don't know who did it. We continue what we're doing, sucking Gotham dry, and when we're done, when everyone, except me, is just like you, when there's no one left to prey on, we branch out. And go national. <laughs> Cut to one of Manny the Shark's clubs. An undead Manny the Shark prepares to bite one of his dancers when Batman crashes through the window. Nice club, Manny. But it could use some more fish eggs and champagne out. Oops. The Joker. But if he's leading them now, their numbers could be legion. It explains the change in tactic. The girl. Her throat. It's worse at times like this. When I'm hunting or fighting, my blood high. The temptation. I feel why he'd want her. Almost taste it. Got to force it down. Get out of here to find some other kind of work. Meanwhile, across town, Miss Cal turns into a giant purple werecat. Yeah, this is funkin' happening. That's where this book is going. Cut to the Joker's office. And look at that. He's watching Blood Mania. If you want to watch my review of Blood Mania, make sure to click that gray block. Make sure to click that gray block. God damn it. Make sure to click that gray box that just popped up in the corner. Or check out the description. Creech tells him that they've been getting hit hard recently and a lot of the family is down. Also, word is... He's undead. Might have known. The minute I get into vampires, so does he. <sighs> it's quite simple, Creech. We'll just have to take him down. Some kind of trap. <laughs> Back across town, the werecat makes her way across the rooftops as she searches for the monster that did this to her. Then she sees Batman flying through the sky and attacks him. Batman has no idea what the hell's happening or why Grimace's hot daughter is here and kicking his ass. But he prepares to stake her anyway. She says it wasn't him, and <laughs> then they start to flirt, and it's weird and gross. Let's move on. Later, Batman works on his synthetic blood mixture in his lab, but shouts, It's no use! Tanya had centuries to perfect her serum. There's no way I can improve it overnight. No way to sate the thirst. I am damned. And I do need help.
So he visits Arianne and learns about where creatures this time. Batman creepily watches her from the shadows as he asks her why there's like a link to the moon. Who knows? Some supernatural alchemy triggered by the moon's radiation? The magical properties of silver light? Silver is supposedly the only uh, element capable of killing a werebeast, by the way. Still not big on supernatural explanations, eh? Not rational enough for you? Yeah, this is like Hollywood darkness, so Ariane can't see him at all. <laughs> they talk as Werecat watches them from across the road, and Ariane comes up with a theory that since the moon affects the tides, and humans are 70% water, the moon creates tides in us. That's <laughs> hilarious, and I love it. Then she's like, or maybe it's all nonsense, who fucking knows? Then Batman... Oh, look at his spine. It's like protruding beneath his cape. I hope you don't hate that. Ariane says Batman saved the city, but became a fallen angel in the process. And then Batman gets really upset at that statement and shouts, I need to know if a vampire can resist blood with or without help. She tells him bloodthirst is the vampire's strongest urge and tells him he's fucked. Batman smashes her desk in anger and breaks through the window, shouting that she's wrong. Meanwhile, the Joker walks down the empty streets and enters a church. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned big time. Uh, how have you sinned, my son? I've flooded the streets of Gotham with rich red stuff. Venice with blood. What are you... What's the matter, father? Collar too tight? <laughs> then Joker begins his bat trap. There's no way to fix it. I've become a junkie. Sir? Addicted to that which I've never tasted. Nothing to assuage my need. Nothing to take its place. Sir, I've brought your sustenance, sir. You haven't taken any for... Don't you understand, Alfred? It's not enough anymore. Nothing's enough. Nothing but the one thing I can't have. Good lord, sir. What, what is happening? Uh, get out of here, Alfred. Don't tempt me. Just get out. Batman crawls on the ground and laps up the blood like an animal before spotting a nearby rat, which he beheads and eats before coming to his senses again. So maybe this is where Frank Miller got it from. Meanwhile, Alfred walks through the red rain and meets Commissioner Gordon. And Alfred tells him, I'm afraid we're losing him. Even later that night, Werecat Woman finds a sweaty and hungry Batman. He says he just can't face it alone, and she brings him back to her place. The next morning, he wakes up, and she introduces herself as Selina Kyle. Bet you didn't see that coming. She asks if he feels any better before standing up naked, and Batman gets one look at that ass and is like, Yes. Yes, I am. Cut to Manny's house, I guess. Batman and Werecat Woman watch the home as they prepare to attack. And inside, vampires suck and taste a woman's dead body before the undead duo crash through the skylight. Then, they kill some vampires, baby. This night confirms Batman's suspicions that the Joker is in charge of the vampires and all the crime families, their wealth, rackets, gangs, and homes. The next morning, Alfred visits Gordon and says that Batman requires daylight help. So the next day, Gordon, Alfred, and a team of trained and skilled vampire hunters make their rounds to the vampire nests. After this is done, there will be no discussion. Ever. Not even with each other. Now let's do it. I had no idea. The butchery. I'll be going home, Alfred. To be sick. Outside, the red rain falls. At one of the five compounds raided, the Joker and Creech look at the undead corpses of their beheaded vampire buddies. Uh, how many are left, Creech? Just the ones who moved in the church basement. Counting me, that's 15 of us. Still plenty for the trap. Now, 
After you phone the others before we leave, we can spring it tonight. What? The Batman's outside, you idiot! He's been following us all night, hoping we'll lead him to another nest. And we're gonna do just that. So, Batman and Selina stalk their pale prey through Gotham, until they reach an abandoned warehouse near the Church of the Rosy Cross. The two cautiously enter the warehouse to find about a dozen vampires all equipped with crossbows. They die pretty easily as the Joker watches from above, and with 13 of the 15 vampires dead, Creech turns into his wolf form and Selina realizes that he was the one who terrorized and savaged her on the bridge. She chases him down and brings him to the ground before ripping out his vampiric intestines and finally his heart. Uh, I don't believe it. Well, that sure showed a whole lot of heart, Creech. Idiot! Now there's only one sucker left, and the Bats has her cornered. Proving, yet again, if you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. Joker aims his crossbow at Batman, but Selina leaps in front of the bolt, taking the hit. She spasms in pain on the ground before succumbing to the bolt's damage. The selfless love of an innocent woman. Dead. Gone forever. Ariane was wrong. All it took was a bolt of wood. Not even silver! Tonight's menu... Stakes for two! Joker shoots another bolt, but Batman catches it and snaps it in his hand. And then he leaps up to the platform. The Joker runs out of the warehouse and into the street, where the red rain drenches his purple suit. And with Batman tailing him from above, he runs into the church. Batman follows closely behind and discovers hundreds of thousands of crosses have filled the church. <laughs> Sorry to squelch your thirst, Bat Babe, but communion is hereby cancelled. Freeze, bloodsucker, and eyeball all those crosses. I see them, Joker, but they don't bother me in the least. They don't? Why not? Because my heart is still pure. It is? But you're a vampire! I've yet to taste human blood. <laughs> Holy water! Uh, yes, refreshing. No! You can't have all the strengths and none of the weaknesses. But I can. You killed her. My long night's soul companion. You killed her. The one thing that kept me sane. Now you die. Sorry, go ahead. Wet your beak, bats. My red stuff blackens your pure heart. Silence. Batman slashes the Joker, and in doing so, snaps the Clown Prince of Crime's neck. His white head bobbles around, revealing a bare white throat. Broken, but still pulsing. It taunt and tempts me. I fall on it. Lips unsheathing fangs of savage hunger. No, can't succumb. Must fight it. Selena's love held me back. Now that love is gone forever. Because he destroyed it, and in so in the end, rattling his last laugh, the Joker wins. And the Batman sinks his fangs into the Joker's flesh as he sucks the blood from the veins. And... He is damned. He rips his blood-soaked mouth away and pleads for forgiveness before the crosses begin burning him. Batman drives a stake through the Joker's heart before crashing out of the window, still sizzling. I have succumbed to weakness and hate and act of vengeance, rage and predation. Doused by red rain, I flee the church. Damned by the curse, I flee the dawn. And doomed by my deed, I flee the blood. The next morning, Alfred holds a letter. Alfred, I've failed you, but the work of the serial killer must go on, at least for one final victim. Notify Gordon. 
You've been a good man these many years. Now you must be better. Do not fail me when I need you the most. <laughs> oh, sir. <laughs> So, later that day, Batman lies in the cold, dark crypt. The note's wrong about one thing, Alfred. He did not fail. But as for the rest, we must trust him. And we must love him. Only then will we have the strength to obey him. To death in peace. And the two drive a stake through Batman's dark heart. Batman manages to release a final peace forever. Before he ceases his unlife. With the deed done, Gordon and Alfred then walk away from their former friend. Chapter 3 Crimson Mist. This is my death. How long have I lived it? No way to know, no time here, nothing but blackness. Awareness but immobility. Paralyzed in a state of eternal suffering. I can think, but I cannot move. Thinking of nothing but the blood I cannot take. The life I cannot have. This is the death for an undead vampire. The final reward of the damned. And it is not death at all. It is a trap between the world of the living and the realm of the dead. The bloodlust is all-consuming. Yet I will never consume again. I am a predator unable to prey. A black claustrophobia in a smothering void from which there is no escape. Death is the last dark dream and final passage. For me, the journey is stillborn. All movement stopped and suspended in blackness. Also, I don't know how long like the time periods are in between this. Let's say six months. That's more dramatic. Cut to Mercy Hospital. Harvey Dent lies in a hospital bed after acid was thrown into his face by a criminal in the witness stand. The doctor removes the bandages and says, Now, Mr. Dent, there's only so much we can do, given the tissue damage. But with reconstructive surgery... Stuff your reconstructive surgery, you two-faced quack. To hell with politics. If the law doesn't want me, maybe the other side does. Now get out of our faces, Doc. We've got a second career to carve. Then he storms out of the hospital room and runs off into the night. Later, in front of a Thomas Wayne statue, a prostitute asks a guy if he wants to party when a nearby manhole cover is thrown into the air. Then this woman is, is grabbed by a giant arm and yanked into the darkness. And it's revealed that Killer Croc is fucking eating people in the sewer. Cut to the outskirts of Gotham. Scarecrow has gone off his rocker and now wears severed fingers on his costume. Ding dong, the crane is dead. The timid crane, the timid crane is dead. <sighs> In the home of a large and balding man, a rock is thrown through the window by some lousy kids with a note. That reads, I'm not a kid. Scared, big man. What is this, some kind of joke? You don't see me laughing, big man. Nothing funny about fear. Who are you? You don't remember Jonathan Crane, big man? A tall, gangly geek. You love to torment and terrify. You wouldn't recognize him now. He's changed. 
And he's different. And thanks to big men like you, Crane grappled it with his fear, projected it outward at those who inspired it. Now tackle this, big man. God help me. Keep him away. God's gone, big man. Leaving me in charge. The Scarecrow, Master of Fear. And it's time to collect my trophy. Yeah, so without Batman, all the villains came out of the woodwork and lost their goddamn minds. Cut to the safe house. Red Rain splashes the sidewalk as Commissioner Gordon is let inside by Alfred. Gordon tells the former butler that they need to talk. Gordon basically says that Batman was the reason the police did so well in Gotham, and now that he's gone, all hell is breaking loose. There's the Penguin, a short Richard Nixon caricature, Poison Ivy, the same old, same old green pinup sexy plant lady, Two-Face, yeah, Scarecrow, and an urban legend about a crocodile man in the sewers. Gordon wonders if they did the right thing by driving the stake into his heart, and then he leaves. Alfred closes the door and says to himself, even as a vampire, surely the master cannot be evil. His sole victim, after all, was the Joker. So later that evening, Alfred makes his way into the crypt. Forgive me, sir, for what I've done, for what I'm about to do. Yeah, doesn't want to come out. Pull hard a penny worth. Your master needs you. You must bring him back to life. You fool. You didn't take my hands! Don't you realize what you've done? But, sir, you're still the same man inside. And your heart has always been good and noble. My heart now pulses to the beat of evil, fool. And I'll never let you and Gordon pierce it again. I couldn't live with your, your blood on my hands, sir. I was already dead. I simply couldn't bear it, sir, to see, to see you. Nor could I bear it, but it's what I deserved. The city needs you. Gotham does not need another monster. Sir, the situation has gotten so bad in your absence. You, I fear you're wrong. What? Yes, sir. And if you need, I will gladly surrender my blood to give you strength. Batman tosses Alfred aside before turning into Red Mist and vanishing up the stairs. Later, Gordon gets a call from Alfred about what he's done, and... <laughs> what the fuck? Look at this bat monster! <laughs> oh my god, he's cross-eyed! <laughs> he looks so goofy! Anyway, cut to the Gotham Warehouse District. The Penguin finishes lobotomizing the cop with his umbrella before the man-bat creature flies inside. It turns into Batman and says... Penguin. You don't scare me. It takes more than some cheap trick, do you? If I'm a trick, Penguin, you're the trick. And he swats the umbrella out of his hand before tearing into the penguin's neck. And the cops are like, holy shit, and run away. After consuming his throat, Batman looks over to the penguin's gang and says, First cop killers. I want information, then your blood, and finally, your heads. Now talk fast, don't die slow. Where is the best of your penguin then? For some reason, he decides to put on the penguin's monocle. Like, has he just gone that insane? Cut to the penguin's mobsters hanging out around a table, talking. Suddenly, they hear five thumps coming from across the room. They all turn and find the severed heads of their gang members and the penguin. The head of your gang is dead. So are you. The next night, Gordon and Alfred make their way to the bat signal. Gordon clatches the lever and the signal lights up the dark rain clouds above Gotham. The man bat Batman lands behind the two and takes a piece of paper from Gordon and tells them to stay back. Then he reads the riddle. When genius becomes dope plus E, how does she redeem herself? Gordon asks what's going on with Batman's whole vampire situation, but he assumes it's pretty bad if he and Alfred are at risk of being eaten. Your city is plagued by the Riddler and Ivy and all the others, but I am a plague. You want help? 
I want blood. I will destroy them, feed on them one by one. Then I will prevent them from returning as monsters at my side. Gordon looks down and says, By becoming everything you've ever despised. Then Alfred tells Gordon that Batman's gone. Huh, some things just never change. Cut to the Gotham Morgue. An autopsy is being done when the door's kicked in, and the Riddler shoots the guy three times in the head. Also, this is the Riddler. Yeah, this is what he's been doing since Batman's gone. He's missing an eye and has at least two question marks stitched into him. When genius becomes dope plus E, how does she redeem herself? Answer, by turning heroin, which minus the E becomes heroin. I'm so clever. That's right. The Riddler has smuggled heroin into Gotham. In a corpse! Riddler, what the fuck happened to you? Ah! Batman appears like a demon from a nearby corpse, and Riddler's like, Batman? Wow, you've really changed. As have you, Riddler, in my absence. But you've graduated to extortion, drugs, and murder. Then the Riddler shoots Batman in the chest. To no effect. What are you? The answer to life's every riddle. Death. And long grey darkness. And Batman rips open the Riddler's neck as he begins to feed. And the Riddler screams in pain. Cut to the Scarecrow terrorizing another one of his bullies. A red mist quickly floats across the front lawn. As Scarecrow horrifies a man, a fanged terror appears from thin air behind him. Tell me, big man, how does it feel to feel... Scared. Batman grabs the Scarecrow by the hand and smashes his fear gas orb in his palm, and the fear gas seeps through the air. My gas! My hand! My fear gas! You think you know true fear? You think you know true terror? Then Batman decapitates Jonathan Crane and begins to feed on the leaking neck. You know nothing. Cut to a meeting between the Mafia of Gotham, Killer Croc, and Two-Face. We're changed now. And so is Batman. He's dead, and slaughtering criminals one by one. It started with the Joker. Now he's eliminated the Penguin, Riddler, and Scarecrow. Drained every drop of blood from their bodies, then chopped off their heads. He's gotta be stopped. The mobsters ask how, and Two-Face says that desperate times call for desperate measures. And then he flips a coin to decide on what they'll do. It's a yes, which means they're gonna get help from their enemy. Cut to a private conservatory. Ivy walks around with her slave boy and then kills him with her poisonous kiss before a mysterious red gas flows down. Not gonna say anything about this panel. Then Batman leaps out of the nearby bushes and sinks his teeth into her bare skin. The next day, Gordon and Alfred meet up to discuss what they're gonna do about Bruce when they notice the bat signal in the sky. They grab a gun and some crosses before heading to meet their former ally. Gordon slowly opens the door to find... Two-Face and Killer Croc standing beside the bat signal. Really not a very good plan if you think about it. I mean, what the fuck were they gonna do if Batman showed up? Two-Face says that they all want Batman stopped, but neither side can do it on their own. So he proposes their two factions become one. He says that their goals are the same, and Gordon tells him to just get off his roof. So a ladder from heaven descends and they're whisked away as Two-Face shouts, Time is running out for both sides of the coin. Gordon asks if Alfred has any idea where Bruce would be, and he tells him, Only one, Commissioner. Beneath the ruins of Wayne Manor, in the caves, with the bats. Cut to somewhere above the city. Dent may be unbalanced, but he's still smart. He was right to propose an alliance. Gordon and Alfred can't stop me on their own. Only together can they have any chance. And even then, it is slim. Then Batman crashes a Black Mask gang party and gruesomely murders everyone inside. Then he flies out of the building and wonders how insane he's become as he drags about nine severed heads, all tied together by a rope. Cut to the former site of Wayne Manor, just before dawn. 
Gordon and Alfred watch the Batman fly inside the caves with a colony of bats. And later, at dawn, the prisoners of Blackgate Penitentiary are left warnings of what happens if you escape. On the large outer walls, impaled on the spikes, are severed heads, staring at the cell windows. Later that night, Batman breaks into Arkham Asylum and one by one murders and feeds on every single inmate inside. A nurse races into the warden's office to tell her what's happening when a severed head crashes through the window. Those damn kids. The note written in blood reads, Go home. Your work is done. At the safe house, Gordon stands in the red rain and tells Alfred they've hit rock bottom. They must form an alliance. Also, by rock bottom, he means the caves below Wayne Manor. So, one phone call later, Two-Face, Croc, and the boys are preparing their plan and getting ready. At high noon, an eight-man team, including Croc, make their way into the dark caverns armed with crossbows and crosses. Gordon says that they'll lay a trap in this big chamber and lure him in. Two-Face asks how, and Alfred says he'll be the bait. Then they just sort of like look around, and Two-Face asks how exactly they're gonna like stop Batman. Gordon tells him that the sun is their plan. They'll just have to come back tomorrow and blow up the cave ceiling. Meanwhile, Batman watches on. Good move, Gordon. But is it good enough? Later that night, Batman visits Arianne again. She freaks out, and he says, I have fed well of late, Arianne. You should be fine. I crave your information more than your blood. Can a vampire ever be laid to true rest? Well, a vampire is undead. As I've told you, a stick of oak. A stake immobilizes nothing more. It grants a false death with full awareness. Then Batman gets angry and crashes out of her window. I swoop to the cave. Once a man's sanctuary. Now the antechamber to a monster's hell. Cursed by Dracula's kiss and the Joker's blood. I am beyond redemption. I am the best of the pit, and even the darkness of this foul stone tomb. Resisting evil is no longer possible. I have become the ultimate predator, with only Two-Face and Croc as my prey. But after them, there's nothing but Blackgate. But they do not deserve my crimson mist. And after them, Gotham will be cleansed. I would be forced to prey on the innocent. How long before I can no longer bear the loneliness? How long before I stop taking their heads? Before I start taking brides? Before I spawn a family larger than the cult of Dracula? Not long. The next day, with nine hours till sundown, the team is prepared with the explosives. All they need to do now is lure the Batman into the trap. So everyone begins to fan out through the tunnels. Alfred runs into the darkness, calling for Bruce, and he shouts for his master until he hears, Right here, Alfred, where I've been all along, hoping for more from you than this pathetic trap. Batman swoops down as everyone begins firing their crossbows, which he easily dodges, and he begins fighting Croc. Batman chokes him out as Gordon fires a crossbow bolt, piercing his chest, causing him to fall into a chasm. The same false death, closing it in. The fall will never end. Alfred and Gordon look over the cliff as Two-Face walks up behind them. Good job, Gordon. But now that the bat's gone, the coin's truce expires. The perfect time and place to kill two birds with one stone. He shoots two bolts, one misses, and the other hits Gordon in the shoulder. Then Croc goes to eat Alfred, but Alfred's like, I've seen my master bring you to your knees. Forever I wake, 
or eternally sleeping, I shall not fear you. Then he shoots Croc with a bolt and runs away as Croc gives chase. Alfred races into a large chamber and hears someone wearily calling his name. He thinks it's Commissioner Gordon, but is surprised when a gloved hand grabs his neck. Meanwhile, Gordon is cornered by Two-Face, and Harvey begins ranting. Further in the cave, Alfred pulls Batman out of a, like, a chasm. You see, the bolt only grazed his heart. Bruce tells Alfred to leave all he can, but Alfred says he never will. Two-Face and Croc are still at large, hunting Commissioner Gordon. You're still needed, sir. Too weak. Could take days to... Then use my strength. What are you saying, Alfred? My blood, sir, is yours. It is the only way. And all I ask is that you prevent me from coming back. After this, Alfred, after you, after them, there will be no more. So Croc charges through the tunnels when his foot hits something. He looks down and finds the head of Alfred Pennyworth lying in the rocks. Then he hears leathery wings echoing throughout the tunnels, and suddenly he's impaled by a stalactite. Judgment time, Gordon. And you're facing double jeopardy. We're a long way from your old courtroom, Dent. So spare me the summation. Just do your worst and go to hell. We fully intend to, Gordon. But only if you lead the way. After I kill Croc, I'll be the only survivor. Two faces. Or one face. Both alive and dead. Both dead and alive. You? How? Only one possible. Blood sacrifice. And now it's your turn. Two-Face fires two bolts, but they are quickly caught by Batman. Two crossbow bolts. One for each face. Then Batman stabs the bolts through Two-Face's head. You failed me, Gordon. And I've become worse than Two-Face. Perhaps worse than Dracula himself. When I had my life, I used it to stop and prevent death. Now I am. Death. I cannot be permitted to exist, to pray and kill again and again. But why do you save my life? Just now, even after I betrayed you and tried to kill you. You betrayed a monster, Gordon. Not the man you knew. What, what happened to Pennyworth? Gone. Dead. There's only you now, the greatest prize of all. I did save your life, Gordon. I saved it for last. No, you can't. But I can. Wake up, you fool. Kill me or join me. We will take them all. Billions. One crimson feast after another. Until the whole world is drained dry. Kill me now, Gordon, or help me exterminate the human race. <laughs> All right. The detonator's in my pill. Do it, and run as if all hell were at your heels. Now, Gordon, now. Gordon presses the detonator, and the surface above erupts in explosions. The cave begins crashing down, and streams of light break into the darkness as Gordon maneuvers around falling rubble. One light from above. My eyes are burned by their final sight. A friend fleeing the horror I've become. I was wrong. Too much explosive force. As he f tries to flee, the entrance of the cave collapses, trapping them both. Gordon says goodbye to his old friend and is crushed beneath thousands of pounds of rock and debris. He will have mercy, old friend, at least on your soul and on Alfred's. Even the city itself will receive a new measure of mercy. Only one major monster remains. 
me. Forever damned, my heart blackened with sin, my soul devoured by evil. And so I walk where Tanya walked before me. Into the searing light which banishes all darkness, surrendering my face and form to atoms of dust, seeking the true darkness of peace, the cool shadows of eternity, and the unknown fate of nothingness. The end. Good lord. Wow, that was really long. 30 pages, almost 10,000 words, 9,682 to be exact, and it took me two hours to record this. I hope you enjoyed. Well, you ghastly terrors of the night, I hope you... <coughs> oh, man. Oh, man, I just got, like, really, really thirsty all of a sudden. Like, for iron. My mouth feels irony for some reason. Is that blood? And my skin is paler than usual. And my hair! Oh my god, it's in two giant buns, just like Gary Oldman in Bram Stoker's Dracula! Oh no! Oh no! I'm a... I'm a... A werewolf! Oh no! Oh no!